while many of us are gearing up for what we believe is the inevitable Bitcoin bull market. Guess what? Senior commodity strategist out of Bloomberg, Mike McGlone, thinks that things are going to be a little bit different. That's right. Is Bitcoin becoming a leading indicator for a massive deflationary recession that is about to take place? Welcome back, everyone. Let's dive into this because I, I was in bull mode, right? Like I'm, I'm ready for the, uh, I'm ready for the latest and greatest all-time highs. I'm ready. I'm getting ready for the face melting omega candles. And lo and behold, lo and behold, Mike McGlone from Bloomberg is going to attempt to crush our hopes. That's right, guys. Bitcoin, once thought to be going up forever apparently is now going to be leading the deflationary recession. Maybe? Yeah, exactly. All right, so here we go. Mike McGlone warns of a reset of a lifetime. Oh, guys, this sounds terrible. The reset of a lifetime. Prepare for a global deflationary recession. Now, of course, uh, I have a hard time with this because as this person who obviously is... Um, very well respected in their circles. I, I just feel like um, this article immediately ignores all the money printing that has taken place since 2020. And and I'm not even talking about the money printing that took place before that, going back to 2009 and earlier. Okay, so we're not even we're not even going there. Okay, we're just trying to stick to here and now. Okay, and and that's not even here and now because that that money printing happened in 2020. So, anyways, let's uh, let's continue on. All right. So McGlone began the interview by revisiting his previous call that Bitcoin could lead the markets downward. He explained that Bitcoin, which was once seen as a fastest horse in the race, is now showing signs of weakness. So I just want everybody to put this in perspective. Bitcoin, which is maybe 10 to 13 percent off of its all time high. OK, this is a 15 year old asset that is really not properly understood by the whole world. And yet, and yet it's actually only understood. And even, um, I, I guess we could say there's degrees of understanding and that's by approximately 1% of the world. And yet this guy, this guy, Mike McGlone, he is pretty certain that somehow this asset that he doesn't really understand is, is going to be the, um, it's going to be the first horse that essentially leads off this deflationary recession. I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. Anyway, so here we go, guys. Despite insignificant inflows into spot Bitcoin ETFs, McGlone noted that the cryptocurrency is underperforming compared to gold and even some traditional equities indicating a possible reversion of risk assets that could signal broader market declines. Okay. So you know, what's happening here. You know, you know, what's happening here. It's being laid on thick. Okay. Bitcoin was, was, which was once seen as hope and optimism is quickly becoming the flag for the upcoming recession. McGlone argued that gold's trajectory is indicative of global deflationary pressures, drawing parallels to the financial crisis of 2008. With central banks, particularly in China, continuing to buy gold, McGlone sees the precious metal as critical asset in an environment where deflationary forces are becoming more pronounced. He predicts that gold could reach $3,000 per ounce, solidifying its role as a safe haven in uncertain times. Now, look, I don't pretend to be an economist, okay? I didn't memorize all of the wonderful books and and internalize the messaging so that I can pretend that it is uh, the product of my own thoughts. Now, I didn't do any of that. But the thing that I have the, the hard time with in all of this, okay, in all of this, is this. Governments, specifically the U.S., is able to print money infinitely. And in the last four years has printed over 70% of the supply. A deflationary economy essentially indicates that the um, 
purchasing power of the dollar is is rising. And so as a result, you can only ask for less dollars because the purchasing power is too strong. So essentially, there's pressure on the price, which means you have to, quote unquote, lower the prices. Um, I, I don't think that that's how this works. I, I don't see how um, governments making the money's purchasing power less and less somehow equals us leading, needing less dollars to purchase the same items. And, and I understand that, you know, the, the people that write this stuff are incredibly educated and whatnot. I, I just don't understand how this is true. I think it's FUD. So here we go again. Mike McGlone is hammering on the fact that we are on the brink of the reset of a lifetime. Okay, so he explained that this reset could involve significant reversion of risk assets, particularly equities, which he believes are currently overvalued. McGlone compared the current market environment in the late 1920s and early 30s, suggesting that a similar reversion could lead to prolonged period of economic hardship. He advised investors to prepare to reduce exposure to risk assets and focusing on more defensive investments like long-term U.S. Treasury bonds and gold. So why is it, why is it that bonds are seen as risk averse? So the reason why bonds are considered not to be risky quite simply is because the U.S. government has never defaulted on its debt. And the full faith and credit of the U.S. government guarantees that interest and principal payments will be made on time. So you know why you want to you know why you want to buy bonds? Because trust me, bro, that's why you want to buy bonds. And and again, right, I, I'm not you know, this is not like in, this is not investment advice or anything like that. Um, the point I'm trying to make is, is that. We always need to know why we are being told a story. Who does the story benefit? Why am I being told this story? The point about being like the 1920s and 30s, um, I can't disagree with that. Uh, that is uh, seemingly accurate uh, at the moment. There's a really interesting book that's called Only Yesterday, and essentially it details um, a, a snapshot uh, from the 1920s leading up to the crash of 1929. Okay. Um, and in all fairness, the parallels are pretty frightening. Okay. Um, there was a whole bunch of evidence that pointed to quote unquote, younger people being lazy, not wanting to work. Um, there's also, there was also a lot of rhetoric around inflation, okay, around prices going up. There was, believe it or not, there was really a lot of controversy as well around genders and stuff like that. So which you're like, what, the 1920s and 30s? Yeah, I mean, this was, and, and again, right, you, you got to remember that everything is relative to its time and what was going on. But essentially what I'm trying to say is, is that, um, you know, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. And Okay, so the case is being made for history rhyming. Fair enough. If that's true, if that's true and history is rhyming, then we have about five years <laughs> until it's about to get really crappy, okay? Um, and, and I don't know what that picture looks like, in, in all fairness. I, I know that a lot of people, uh, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but I know that some people would 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 want to, you know, make it sound like, like they have some type of an answer of what that picture is going to look like. But we are not in the same place we were back in the 1920s, okay? Uh, back in the 1920s, the, the world wasn't essentially depending on U.S. debt and the U.S. dollar, okay? There was no uh, America, quote-unquote, quote world police, okay? Um, so the situation was completely different. The economy right? The way that it functioned was also different. It was much more spread out. It was much less global. Today, we are in a much more global economy. So I don't think, like I said, right? It's, I mean, we're going to rhyme, but maybe we're not going to rhyme exactly. So all of this to say, are, are we actually going to see this insane recession that they're talking about? Is Bitcoin going to be the leader 
of of this great deflationary recession? Uh, I don't think so. And, but I don't really know. You know, I, I, I'm just saying I, I just don't see it because so far what we've seen, what we've seen that causes these things is actually fear in the market and people pulling out their resources so that they can accumulate them. And as a result, we start to see runs on banks, businesses, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy until people gravitate away from fear um, towards confidence and courage. So lastly, the the piece I wanted to touch on finally was um, the current annual inflation rate, right? So according to the fake numbers that the uh, the government comes out with, it, it's 2.9% in the US, okay? Which is, again, it's supposedly the lowest point since 2021, okay? But prices are still, again, right? I I take these with a grain of sand because I actually think it's much worse than this. When I go to the grocery store, I know that I have paid more than 20% on a few different items than what I used to pay for. So I don't think that number is necessarily real, but according to AI, prices are still 20.9% more expensive since the pandemic-induced recession began in February 2020. So final thoughts. Uh I'm not seeing I'm not seeing a a deflationary recession. And again, like I said, I'm not I'm not some economist or anything like that. No, I'm just an average dude that goes to the store like everybody else and purchases items and saves money when he can and you know what I mean? Like to me that that's the real indicator of the economy, right? The average person. And the truth of the matter is is that I don't see how endless government money printing somehow equals a deflationary recession. The value of each dollar is going down. So all that would happen is hyperinflation. So my question is, why are we being told about this information, right? Like, why are we, why is there a narrative being formed that somehow, Bitcoin is going to lead off this deflationary recession. Do I think that the US dollar being printed ad nauseum will have more of an effect on the coming hyperinflationary recession? Yeah, I think that that's significantly more likely. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about today, guys. The, the FUD never ends. You know, yesterday... We had Telegram, you know, the Telegram CEO and everybody starting to push NOS there. And then all of a sudden today, uh, Bitcoin's leading off the great deflationary recession uh, that is to come. So, guys, it's you need to understand the news is a whatever the hell sticks to the wall, right? We throw whatever we can at the wall, whatever sticks, boom, that's the news. Anyways, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I'll catch you tomorrow. 